and welcome to another open source pro tip by Sangoma. Today we'll be talking about how to move to PJSIP. It's a big change, but it's much easier than you think, and we're going to show you how right now. So let's get started. First step is to upgrade to FreePBX or PBExact 15, as we've added a script in there, which allows you to convert many or all of your extensions all at once. To upgrade to 15, first log into the web UI, then go to admin, Updates. Once on the Updates page, click on Module Updates, and then press Check Online. This will check to see if there's any new modules available for your system. If there is any new modules, then at this time we need to update them. In this case, we press the Show Only Upgradable button, and there's no modules to update. So now we move over to System Updates. We press the Check Online button to see if there's any updates available. In this case, we can see that there is currently no updates. So we are fully up to date at this point. Now we go back to the module updates tab and we press manage local modules. And then on the next page, we press the upload modules button. And then we paste a URL in here from the link in the description below. This installs the PBX upgrader module. So press the local module administration. Then we will see our new module below called PBX Upgrader. Click on that, press install, and then press the process button. This will start installing the module for you. Press confirm on this page, and then wait for the installation to continue. After it's done, press the return button. Once the page fully loads, we will now see the Apply Config button. Press that to complete the module installation. Now go to Admin, and you'll see the 14 to 15 upgrade tool. Now press the Check Requirements button to scan your system to make sure you meet all the requirements. Then press the Proceed to Upgrade process. Select your distribution, and then click Next. This will start downloading everything that's needed and start the upgrade process. Once the upgrade process finishes, then we will press the refresh button followed by the apply config button. At that point, the upgrade will be completed. We can then verify the upgrade has been done by going to the summary tab and seeing the PBX version is now on 15. The next step is to change the port that PJSIP listens on. The reason why is we want it to listen on port 5060, which is the standard SIP port. To change the SIP port, log into the web UI, go to Settings, then go to Asterisk SIP Settings. In here, first you want to go to the Chan SIP tab, because Chan SIP is already listening on 5060. So we need to move that to a, a different port, such as 5160, and do the same for TLS. After this is completed, then we can go to the PJ SIP tab and move PJ SIP to 5060 by scrolling down and modifying the port there. We will see that there's a UDP port and a TCP port. Set both of those to 5060, and then the TLS port to 5061. You may not see these ports if you do not have TCP or TLS enabled. The next step is to press the Apply Config button to apply the change. As well, it's always a good idea to bring up the console, log in, and run FW Console Restart. This will ensure that the change is made and there is no issues. The next step is to start by converting one extension. To do that, Go to Applications, go to Extensions, and then locate the extension that you want to try first, and press the Edit button. Once in the extension, simply go over to the Advanced tab, and you'll see a Change to Chan PJ SIP Driver button. Press that, then press OK, and then the page will reload. Press Apply Config, and after this is done, the change will be made for you to test your very first extension. Once you verify that one extension works, 
Then we can start by doing a batch of extensions or all of the extensions on the system, depending on how you want to do it. Keep in mind, though, that the ports have changed. So if some of your extensions are going to run on Chansip and some are going to run on PJSIP, ensure that you update Endpoint Manager to reflect those changes. If you simply follow the steps that we're doing here, you can convert all of your extensions over without having to do an Endpoint Manager update, because in both cases, before and after the Chansip to PJSIP, all phones will be pointing to 5060. Now we will SSH into the system and run FW console convert to PJSIP dash A. This will convert all ChanSIP extensions over to PJSIP. Once done, run an FW console R to reload asterisk. You can also just do a batch of extensions, as I mentioned previously, and this is explained on the wiki page in the description below. The next step is to convert all of your ChanSIP trunks to PJ SIP trunks. Unfortunately, there's no script or button to do this. It all has to be done manually. But in most cases, you will only have a handful of SIP trunks, as typically they're used to connect to another PBX or a provider. To create a PJ SIP trunk, simply go to Connectivity, then Trunks. Then press Add and PJ SIP trunk. Here we'll edit one I've already previously made. Once in here, you'll see it's just like with ChanSIP. You give it a name, you put in a caller ID, so that way there's always a placeholder there, and then you can set maximum channels and, and other familiar options. Next, we'll go to the PJSIP settings tab, and here I've set up an IP authentication trunk where I just have the IP in there and I've selected none for auth and registration. This is a common setting for an ITSP. Another common setting would be to register with that ITSP. So you would have, as I'm showing here, an outbound authentication and you would send registration outbound. And you type in your username and password at the top, just as, as we're seeing here. This would allow you to register to a provider. Another type of setting is receiving registration, maybe for an inter-office trunk or something like that. In summary, there's really only three types of SIP trunks, an IP authentication trunk, a trunk where you register to the provider or to a device, or a trunk typically is an inter-office trunk where something is registering to the PBX. Once all the PJ SIP trunks are made, ensure that you delete all the Chan SIP trunks and modify the outbound routes before applying the config. That way, only one registration is coming from your PBX at a time towards the provider. Thank you for watching this open source pro tip by Sangoma. If you found value in this, please like and subscribe.